I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading, and this is your muzzleloading news for September 2023. First up, in potential legislative news, the ATF is now proposing a new rule that could affect reporting on the storage of explosive items like gunpowder, and we're not seeing an exclusion in here for muzzleloading related or fireworks related even black powder. The Department of Justice is proposing to amend Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives regulations to require that any person who stores explosive materials notify on an annual basis the authority of having to the authority of having jurisdiction for fire safety in the locality in which explosive materials are being stored the type of explosives, the magazine capacity, and location of each site where materials are stored. In addition, the proposed rule requires that any person who stores explosive materials notify the authority having jurisdiction for fire safety in the locality in which the explosive materials were stored whenever storage is discontinued. These changes are intended to increase public safety. I'm not going to get into my thoughts on that, but I, <laughs> I don't think it's actually for uh, for public safety. We don't see a lot of issues with the storage of muzzleloading powder or modern centerfire powder. It's just not in the news and it's not even reported on, hardly exists to my knowledge. If you're like me and you're not really a fan of this proposed rule change, we as citizens of the United States have an opportunity here to voice our concerns. I do ask that you be professional in the comments here. They do take that into consideration as we have seen in other public comment periods here. Um, I'm not saying that this is going to go through. I'm not trying to raise too much alarm or say the sky is falling. We're not going to have flames behind the Supreme Court and a thumbnail here. But I do want to bring this to your attention. Uh, if you're the kind of person who's not a fan of this kind of what this could lead to, could lead to some kind of database and tracking information of what is used and where. Uh, I'm not saying that it is, but it could very obviously in how they're structuring this. So we have a public comment period. We have an opportunity to voice displeasure for this or voice approval for it, I guess, if you're along those lines, but I don't think that many of us are. The real concern with something like this is that it could lead to the tracking of, uh, of stores of this stuff, which historically here in the United States is kind of a big deal. Um, I understand the concerns for safety, but when it comes down to constitutional rights, there's a bit of a, a hairy line here, but we've seen the ATF approach and cross over that hairy line quite a bit here. So I'm using my opportunity here, you know, to say, you know, if you're not a fan of this, please go out there and leave a public comment. Tell your friends, tell your buddies to leave a public comment. There's no telling what this kind of thing could lead to in the future if it is implemented. Again, you know, it's a little bit personal, but a lot of the things that the ATF here does are these rule changes. They're not legislative changes. And, and thankfully, in my opinion, we've seen a lot of this go through the courts and get tied up at least a little bit uh, and, and hopefully lead to in favorability of the Constitution here in the United States um, to not lead to some of this stuff. But that's kind of my thoughts on this personally. Not trying to inflect too much of that on you here on the channel. In more positive news here, Team USA brought home the gold in the mid and long range international world long range championships with the MLAIC. It's not necessarily as large as the Olympics, but it is still awesome to see Team USA win those long range shooting sports, especially in muzzle loading because they're so tied to our American history here. Uh, thank you to all the teams and the MLAIC and all the volunteers and, and all the effort that went into this match. I'd love to travel to one some year and see it in person. It just seems like an incredible series of events. Coming up in Italy in 2024, we're gonna have kind of the short range MLAIC international competition. Friend of I Love Muzzleloading, Eddie Davenport, is saving up right now to travel to and compete in Italy in 2024. We'll have a link to his fundraising efforts in the description down below. Third on our list for this month, <laughs> third on our list for this month is the question everybody seems to be asking right now, and that's where's GoX? It's popped up a little bit on the forums here. We're a couple months out from the last update from GoX, and we still have not seen any GoX black powder hit shelves. Splicing this in here, we just got confirmation from the operations manager of the NMLRA via Facebook that they're expecting a shipment of GoX black powder to be at Friendship Indiana for the NMLRA fall national shoot here this week. So this weekend, if you are an NMLRA member, according to the NMLRA representative here, you should be able to purchase GoX black powder 
newly manufactured GoX black powder for the first time, for the first time since Estes Energetics bought it. Carl, the Estes Energetics CEO who now runs GoX black powder, uh, is going to be at the NMLRA September Championships here this fall in just a few days as of recording. So I, I hope to talk with him some about what has happened with GoX and when we can expect to see it distributed across the country. I know that price is a big concern because we have not heard any information as far as to what the GoX black powder is going to cost us uh, with this relaunch here. And I understand those concerns. Prices are going up everywhere uh, on everything. We've seen outrageous prices for caps, especially the past few years. Uh, the European powder has gone up, so I do not expect at all, and I hope that you do not expect at all, to see GoX powder for the same price that it was when Hajin was running it pre-2019. That being said, when it comes to the price of GoX black powder here, I kind of personally take the same stance as I do with other American-made items out there. I am personally willing to save up and pay a premium for something that's American made, made by American workers. I have nothing against the European powders. You've seen me shoot it for the past two years, almost in every single video that we've published with traditional black powder. I love this stuff, but personally, I don't think that you can argue with being supportive of seeing black powder made in the United States. Personally, to me, I see black powder as crucially important to American history and the foundation of the United States. And that was really my largest concern when Hodgson announced that they were closing down and trying to sell the GoX black powder plant. This would have been, if they, didn't have, if they wouldn't have sold it, it would have been the first time since the start of the country that we weren't producing black powder here in the United States. And so for me, it's a cultural touchstone for having that still run here. That's why I've talked about it so much. That's why I've been so passionate about following this news as we continue to see GoX black powder continue on. It's a good powder. I love it, but I'll tell you over and over again, if it goes down the barrel and it shoots in my flintlock, I'm going to shoot it and enjoy it. That's my personal take on it. There's been a lot of discussion out there on whether or not this is good or bad, but for me, it, I talk a lot about muzzleloading culture and American culture. To me, seeing GoX black powder come online when it does here uh, is culturally important, not only for muzzleloading, but for the continuation of kind of early American history here. I, I just, I think it's important and, and that's just how I feel about it. In muzzleloading industry news, the Traditions Shed Horn has officially hit distributors and retailers across the country. My friends of the Kenoki Trading Post were some of the first that I saw online receive the Shed Horn and announce that they had one in stock. This has been talked about since SHOT Show 2023 here. We spoke with Traditions at the 2023 NRA show. They could not give us a hard timeline, but it is lined up for the Shed Horn to be released right now. It looks like mid-August is really when they hit store shelves. So this might be old news for you, but if you've been waiting on the Shed Horn, now is the time to check your retailers and see if you can pick one up. Adjacent to that, CVA has released their Fire Stick compatible rifle. Uh, I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about it because it, it's a little outside of my wheelhouse personally, but we've heard this talked about now for a couple years. Um, it's been kind of whispers here and there, but CVA has, uh, has introduced this. An interesting note here, is, as I've spoken to uh, a couple distributors around the country about this model, because I'm curious about what this is doing uh, and what it's doing, especially to the traditional side lock muzzleloader side of things. And I've had multiple retailers tell me now that traditional muzzle loaders are outselling these newer fire stick compatible muzzle loaders, um, and, and sometimes up to 10 to 1 as a ratio. 10 being the traditional muzzle loading side to 1 being kind of the crossfire or the fire stick compatible uh, muzzle loaders that are out there. So I think that's an interesting tidbit of knowledge. Uh, I'm excited that uh, we have that kind of numbers because we've heard a lot of concerns that these newer models are going to kill traditional muzzle loading, but it seems like the demand is still there for those traditional side lock muzzleloaders. That's all I've got for you this week. Coming up here shortly, we're gonna be at the NMLRA fall shoot here in mid-September to bring you some more muzzleloading news from the grounds as industry representatives and muzzleloading enthusiasts alike flock to Friendship Indiana for one of the largest shoots in the country. I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. We'll have links to everything that we've talked about at ilovemuzzleloading.com. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.